Come in. Oh, hello, ladies. Hi, Miss Rogers. Thank you so much for having us by. We know how busy you are. Uh huh. We are, we're here to ask you 27 questions whenever you're ready. Okay. I hope I can answer all 27. Let's go. How are you doing recently? Well, it's been busy with all of the COVID protocols that we've had to have in place. It's kind of changed the way we've run the school. And, you know, as you're shooting this video, we're coming up to our Christmas vacation. So it's even busier with all the, you know, the Christmas concerts being going online and all the different activities that we've had to change a little bit in order to have the traditions that we have at Seisen every year. And what about the students at Seisen? How are they doing? Overall, I think the students are really, really happy to be back on campus. We were online from the beginning of March straight through until June last year, but we've been back on campus since August. So I think they're, pre they're happy to be back on campus. Of course, it's a little bit stressful because we have new protocols in place about the way the classrooms are set up, the way lunch times are conducted. But overall, I think the students are doing okay. There seems to be a lot of files around. How stressful is it being headmistress at Seisen? Well, I think there's different types of stress. There's the stress when you've got a deadline for reports, for different things that need to be organized. And then sometimes there's a the stress of the unexpected. So this year we've had a little bit of things where we've had to close grade levels down because of, you know, a, a, a positive test of COVID in the parent community or among a student. So that adds another layer of stress, I think, not just for me, but for all of the admin team. So we've been working weekends, we've been, you know, working late at night, um, just in order to deal with some of those things that happen, because you can never predict when it's going to happen. So what do you do to keep safe? What do I do to keep safe? Well, there are many things that we're all doing as a community. First of all, as you see, I'm masked. So this is very important that I remain masked whenever I'm walking around the school. Another thing is that we have a set of protocols in place every morning. Basically, uh, I have to take my temperature before I come to school. I check my temperature again when I come into school. And then there's all the hand sanitizing that goes on during the school day. So we have, we have many things that we are trying to model for the students that if the teachers are doing this well, then the students are also doing this well as well. So why don't we go over here and check our temperature? So every day we're che checking temperatures at the main office and in the gym. We expect everybody to take their temperature at home, but we double check when they come to school. Basically the same things. I always, first thing when I go home, I make sure I wash my hands. Uh, I wash my hands before and after eating. I'm making sure that I'm, well, I'm trying to get enough sleep, making sure that healthy diet and exercise, just the things that you would do normally to stay healthy, but also just that added piece of uh, the hand hygiene and making sure that we follow through with things like that and not taking unnecessary trips or you know going out and eating in a lot of restaurants as the government says that we should restrict that a little bit at the moment and what about school how has season adapted to the situation i think season has adapted very well and i think part of that is because everybody wants to be back on campus while the online learning worked very well for us School's about the interaction, the social interaction as well. It's not just about the academic piece. So I think Seisen is doing very well. We've had to make some adjustments in our corridors and our classrooms. So it may have a very old fashioned feel in the sense that all the desks are lined up in rows, whereas before we would have them in circles or in pods or things like that. But we're making the best of what we can with the situation. Do you think the whole team at Seisen is doing a good job handling these measures, following these measures? Absolutely. I think it's not easy, and sometimes we forget. There might be little things that we might forget. But overall, we're doing a really good job, I think, because we're still on campus. How do you think the teachers are handling all of this? I'm very, very grateful to the teachers. They've put in a lot of extra work. 
Uh, they have extra duties now in the morning. We have teachers all over the school checking on the kids, checking temperatures, making sure that uh, they have their temperature check forms brought in from home, also extra lunch duties, and they're teaching their classes. And a very important thing is that the majority of our teachers are not um, connected to Japan. They may not have family here. So with the government restrictions over the past uh, year about travel, most of our teachers haven't seen their families in about a year and a half. So I think the fact that they're dealing as well as they're dealing with all of this and they're maintaining a positive attitude with their students is very, very um, important and I'm very proud of their efforts. Do you think CSUN has changed a lot due to Corona? I think it has changed to a certain degree in the way that we're teaching and in the fact that we can't have groups together, small groups together and things like that. Obviously some of the sports we can't you know, run competitively. You know, the fine arts has changed a lot and what we can sit singing through masks, playing instruments with a shower cap on the instrument, things like that. It's, that's what's changed a lot. And how have you seen this impact students and teachers? I think in two ways. Very positively, it's brought the community together for sure because we all want to be here. We really, really don't want to be in line if we can at, at all avoid it. But also there's a certain stress level with it as well in that uh, teachers have had to readjust what they're doing in the classrooms a little bit. And the students, of course, they have their worries about, you know, they don't want to get sick, they don't want their grandparents to get sick or their parents to get sick. And some of the students, too, have not seen family or have not been able to travel back to their home countries for quite a while. On a lighter note, how do you spend your free time? How do I spend my free time? Well, with my family. I do a lot of reading. I do a lot of walking. I have a very... A uh, famous dog among the staff who is actually very, very shy, but he goes for very long walks with me in order to help me reduce my stress. In fact, sometimes I come home and he watches me coming in and he will hide his leash because he thinks, uh oh, that's, she's had a long day. I'm going to go for a really long walk that I don't want to go on. Do you have any new hobbies recently? Hmm. Not necessarily new hobbies, but definitely uh, I'm reading a lot more science uh, journals and things like that, trying to keep up with the latest research on the, on, uh, the virus. You know, all of this is reminding me of quarantine. A lot of us spent a lot of time isolated in our homes. Mm -hmm. Describe what your typical day during quarantine was like. Uh, you mean during when we had that the what they called the soft lockdown? Yes. Well, basically the school was closed down, but I was able to come into work every day, and I spent long days working through what we were going to do, how we were going to do it, and in fact weekends as well, working with the admin team on moving forward with what we were going to do. What frustrated you the most? Not having the students on campus and not knowing quite what was going to happen next. What is frustrating you the most now? Ah, well, of course, as we shoot this video, the numbers are rising in Tokyo. We're just about to go off on Christmas vacation. And what's going to happen in January when we come back? Will we all be able to come back? Will we have people, either students or teachers who are sick? I think that's what's frustrating me the, the most, is the sense of the unknown, what's next? Quarantine has made it some deep self-evaluation. So, what changed in your life? I think what changed in my life the most was the lack of time. And then wanting to be able to re reflect, but not necessarily having the time to reflect at that point. Did you have any new revelations? I don't think new, re new revelations would be the way to talk about this. I think it would be more... Hello, ladies. Hi. You're on camera. Hi. Hello. Wow. <laughs> okay. Oops, excuse me. Um, I think it would be more the piece of reinforcing that we've got some fantastic community spirit at the school and we've got some great students and we've got some great teachers who really care about the students.
So, I heard that online schooling has become a new trend. Did Saison join in? We had to because we went online in um, March. And we continued straight until the end of the school year in June. So we didn't have a choice and we adapted very, very quickly. Um, I think, uh, depending on the division of the school, online learning can work very well with older students. It's more of a challenge with the younger students because you have the piece of, whoops, wanting the students to um, be able to play, be able to engage socially, and then the amount of screen time that we had to balance for the younger students was the biggest challenge. And how did the teachers find it? I think at the beginning they were very enthusiastic because it was something new they were learning as well but of course by the time June came around they were drained they were very tired they had a lot of screen time because not only were they teaching they were also doing their regular regular division meetings and we also had a, an accreditation report that we were preparing for so some of our teachers ended up going back home because of family reasons and they were zooming in their classes at two three o'clock in the morning and coming into meetings maybe at three or four o'clock in the morning and then going to bed and starting their day all over how did the students handle it again i think it really depends on the student situation in their home if they had a place that they could really concentrate on the computer um, some students again they really really liked it in fact um, they like the instruction online better than in person, but they still miss their friends. How did you feel about online schooling? I think it's a great tool, but I, I think it's not the only way to have a school. School is about the social aspect, not just about the academic aspect. And I think the online learning, there's a certain component of that that's missing. If you had to pick one, online schooling or in-person schooling like it is now, uh -huh. which one would you pick? I would pick in-person schooling, but not necessarily how it is now. I want it back to where it was before, where we don't have masks, where we can sit in groups, talk in groups, have our singing, have our plays, have everything in person. Would you say season, the season community has changed for the better or worse because of the pandemic? I think that not necessarily changed, but I think it's highlighted that we are a community first and foremost, and that that's where our strength is, lies in community. Now, of course, the in-person piece really, really would be the way to go, but we have generated that online community as well. So I think that community is the most important part. Finally, any last words for the students in the future watching this video? Well, I hope that the students who are watching this video in the future, first of all, that they're not masked, second of all, that they're in person, and third of all, that they see how the generation before them um, had to deal with circumstances that were difficult, but just like the Phoenix, they were able to rise again. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Thank you so much. I'm a busy woman, so I'm going to leave you. Thank you. Bye-bye.